Welcome to Can We Talk, I'm Derek. And I'm Sonia. Thank you for watching. This is our Christmas edition, and it's entitled, There's Glory in the Love Story. Now, the first love story was really Jesus Christ dying on the cross for us. And because we celebrate Christmas in that, in that light, we thought it fitting to talk a little bit about love um, because there was so much love this week uh, shown through friendships and family mm -hmm. and time spent. But the real meaning of Christmas was the greatest love story of them all, which is Jesus Christ dying. So coming to earth as a baby, growing up as a man, knowing that he was going to be crucified just so that we could have life everlasting. And we take a minute to just give God praise for being so loving to send his son to do that for us. So while we celebrated Christmas, celebrating what it really meant, it also gave us an opportunity to come together because it's nothing like Christmas holidays right. to have people stop, travel, sit, eat, fellowship. And we love Christmas because of that, because we get to see people that we wouldn't ordinarily see or get to spend time with. So this episode, we're going to actually explore one of the types of love that exists. There are a couple that exist. There are about more than four or five loves. There's the filial love, and there's the storge love, there's the agape love. We're going to talk about the eros love. Um, and they're all Greek names um, that come from different meanings. But eros love is the romantic love, the you know, passionate love. It comes from the word erotic. Yes, it does come from the word erotic, Right. yes. And so we had an opportunity to really celebrate love with other couples, including our daughter, who's a 20 year old junior in college. And she's been seriously dating a young man who um, lives in the Atlanta area. And he's like another son to us. We mm -hmm. love him dearly. And uh, it, feels, it feels really good to see our daughter have a healthy uh, help, yeah. dating life right. with a guy that we really love. Like, uh, and really a lot of guys, him. a lot of my male friends ask me, are you okay with her dating? Yeah. That's what's supposed to happen. Right. Yes, I'm okay with yes, it. Yes, weren't you dating at 20? Yeah. I was dating at 20. I was I mean, dating at, well, I was. You were married I at 20. Married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was married. Not to me. <laughs> but we digress. Right. <laughs> um, so we are going to share with you um, some wonderful footage that we were able to create throughout the Christmas holiday. Right. Um, our daughter and her boyfriend, Jordan, are in this uh, episode, as yeah. well as some really close friends of ours, Melissa and Theo Connor. Theo. Theo. We call him Teo. Teo, Teo. Teo. He's from St. Martin. St. Martin. And uh, we got to visit his lovely country two years ago around yeah. this time. It's time to go back. And, and then also some really good friends, a friend that I've known from like for 30 years, um, Alvin Chia and his wife, Adria, who is a really good girlfriend of mine. Um, that we've developed friendships through the years. So you will see a little bit of them um, in this episode. Spread love. <laughs> ba, ba, da. I hate when he does that. Sp so we call Alvin <laughs> Vinny because that's how we knew him at school. Uh, for those of you that may not know, I attended Oakwood University, back then Oakwood College. And Vinny and I are, were in the same class and we graduated in the same class. We were very close friends. We actually moved off campus and our apartments were above each other. Um, and so uh, Vinny um, auditioned for Take Six when we were freshmen and actually got in. Um, and he is a 10 time Grammy award winner in his group. Um, but he is extremely, extremely down to earth, very humble, and we picked up right where we left off like we had seen each other just the other day. And it had been a few years. So Derek likes to sing Spread Love because yeah. that was one of the songs that actually won a Grammy, but Derek wishes he could sing like that. I you can know, sing. Can. So he always breaks out into that. I can sing like that. <laughs> yes, you can, honey. So we really had a shower. Yeah. <laughs> we, had, we had a good time of, of just you know, laughing and, and fellowshipping and food, and, and it was really, really good. Yes. So we want to show you um, their lives and how they met and actually talk and about- And their love story. And their love story. Yeah. And, and they're going to share their love story, and they're going yeah. to give some 
tip it, tidbits on, you know, for uh, Jordan and Sian, their relationship, how they met. Right. And and how that kind of went to where the dynamics, are, the dynamics of it. it of dating to as young adults. And, and then we've got the um, middle aged couple, not middle aged, younger right. adult, older adult couple, um, Theo and Melissa. They're right. a little bit younger than we are. Right. So you've got their version of their right. dating story. And then you've got um, Alvin and Adria's uh, story, who they both were married before. Right. And so their love is a new restoration love. <laughs> so we wanted you to hear from other couples. You yes. know, hear from us all the time the things that we think are important in relationships and in marriages. But it's good to hear another perspective uh, from other couples. So, yeah. yeah. So take a look. Wi-Fi, so it's sending really late. So they're like, I was closest to Jordan, so they're like, Sion, ask him for a Wi-Fi password. So that's when I introduced myself, and I asked for the Wi-Fi password. And it took a minute, because you have to find, you took a picture of the piece of paper with yeah, the a, Wi-Fi. Yeah. So you're like looking through your phone, and then that's when you typed it in. And then we went downstairs, everyone started to come, and then it was half time, and I had the Wi-Fi password, but my friends wanted it too. So they're like, see, I oh, asked that's Jordan. Why he asked it yes. Yeah, I thought, okay, I thought that was just for you. Mm -mm. Okay. So they were, um, so they told me to ask Jordan. So, so it was kind of like in a room like this, like they were watching the TV in here. Mm -hmm. There was and like an opening. We, yeah. we were like in the kitchen area, sitting mm -hmm. over there. So imagine yeah. him sitting over here, I'm over there, and I say, come here. And then he was like, me. I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I still didn't really know her at the time. So right. Because like, yeah. I was trying to get his attention the whole time, but he was in the game. But I didn't want to just walk over there because I didn't know anyone. Mm -hmm. right. So he came over and I was like, um, could you send me the password again? Um, that's why I, I think I introduced you to Ari and Brio. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, no. I said, well, I said my friends want the Wi-Fi password too. So he said, I'm just going to send it to you because it's too long to type. So I gave him my phone. I guess that's when you put your number in my phone. Mm -hmm. And then, <laughs> then after that. That was a good move, Jordan. That was. <laughs> Jordan, he ne but the thing, Jordan never was talking to you guys if he was interested. He was just talking as a friend. Mm. So we were always friends first. Usually like at the birthday first. party, yeah. he was a friend. You could tell that you guys were friends at the party. Um, mm. It wasn't until later over the summer. Mm. So we were just friends. But you, you would hang out with me more. Like you took me out to eat. Um, you would take. Um, you position yourself. Let me get right there. That's when. Oh, uh, Ari and Bria started, you know, becoming your friends. You used to take us uh, to Walmart. I started hanging out with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you just started, started being. Out with he started making friends. himself available. Yeah. Us. Uh, yeah. 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 I was making myself available. So he injected himself yes. into her world. Yes. 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 Her yes. friendship. Yes. Yes. I love it, yes. I love it. Yes. I want to know who it. your people are. Come on. Yes. Come on. Who your people are? My people. 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 My
two rehearsals, and then I was gone. Oh. Right. So. Wow. I, but what I remember is short lived. She had, um, she had natural hair, <laughs> and it was uh, like a curly afro. Mm-hmm. Yes. I, I want to say it was. Um, <laughs> That's what I'm talking it about. had like brown, brown highlights, mm-hmm. and with like a uh, blondish tips. Hey, okay, he got that detail. thing down, yeah, down yeah, packed. Yeah. But That's right. it was swagged all the way up. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. So I, I did like that, and that that stood out. Of course, uh, she had a nice smile, but I don't remember speaking at all. Mm-hmm. We didn't speak, and then literally that was it. I didn't see her again. There was no mm. connection, and then months later, she walks in with another girl to one of our rehearsals where we were opening um, auditions. auditions. <laughs> For our alto and a soprano, mm-hmm. and then she walks in. I didn't think I was ready for a relationship, so I wasn't even looking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had a lot going on, and I had nothing going on. I didn't have enough going on that I felt is worthy to offer to mm, someone. That's deep. Mm-hmm. Honestly, so oh, wow. you know, I, I wasn't looking like that. I wasn't, you know, what I'm saying I wasn't looking because. I felt like I, I needed to have more to be able to step up. But she, she was on the radar. Right, right. So Theo would have to leave. And he'd, he'd be like, you know, I got to go. I got to go take care of my cousin. Or I got to cook for my cousin. Or I got to cook, you know, for my family. And I would just be like, that is so awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, this man is taking care of somebody. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody super important in his he life. Tried, he, he's not trifling. Um, and so anyway, so I just noticed those characteristics that he w- that he was very loyal, that he was very genuine and kind, mm-hmm. and I was attracted to him. Like I was like, this dude is cool. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so tell us your love story, guys. Well, we <laughs> met in 2006 six. Mm-hmm. at her church. She used to go to a mega church in <laughs> Dallas, mm-hmm. and Take Six was invited to do a big concert there. Yeah. So we did a whole day of shows at the various services. They got a bunch of services. It was his 30th anniversary. 30th anniversary. Oh, After anniversary. one of the services, all these people are streaming out, like, a, you know, thousands of people are streaming out. And I looked up, we were signing autographs. Yeah. I looked up and I saw Adrian. I was like, wow, wow. as a beautiful black woman. And I followed her. Mm. I'm supposed to be signing and I followed her all the way out the door like, whoa. Wow. Whew, man, <laughs> signed for new signing. Then instant replay, second service, uh, same thing. People are streaming out again after it. But so I saw her, looked up of all those times, but I saw her coming back in. Yeah. She had changed clothes, I think, but I, mm, I said, yeah. that's that girl. <laughs> and I followed her back in. That girl. <laughs> yeah, and I followed her just looking, and, and, and again, I'm supposed to be signing autographs, and the person standing there, I'm like, nah. <laughs> and uh, she started talking to this friend of mine. And I was like, you know her? You gotta introduce me, introduce me. So yeah. I came over and we uh, we met. And the first thing he asked me was, "Do you have gum?" <laughs> you have gum? <laughs> I was like, um, "Yeah." I thought it was really sweet. Why he wanted to make sure. He wanted to make sure he was fresh. Oh, oh, yeah, because yeah. Yeah, yeah, I had yeah. some work to do. And I had to make sure she was ready. That's for all I had to say. <laughs> so you know that the movie um, Brown Sugar. The question is, when did you fall in love with hip hop? Mm. Oh yeah. So when did we when fall in did love? You fall yeah, that's a great question. Ah, that's a great that's question. That's a great question. Well, what made me fall in love with Alvin? I don't call him Vinny. What made me fall in love with Alvin is when we start dating. I can tell that he was a man after God's heart. And the way that he loved his children and his family I knew like, huh, there's something about him. But the most thing, what really, when we, we start dating, we just, we clicked. We had this instant bond, mm-hmm. like me and you, mm-hmm. um, where we just had this, we thought the same. And um, what I loved about him, he has 10 Grammys. Mm. Nobody would ever know that he has 10 Grammys because he's so humble. Wow. Take six does not make him right. who he is. Right. It's great. Right. It's a great career. It's afforded a great right. lifestyle. Right. But the thing about him, He's so humble, you wouldn't even know. Mm-hmm. That's what I love about him. Wow. Because he can stand with whoever, do whatever. He's not caught up with the facade of yeah. who I am. Right. Um, mm. So that really is what made me fall in love with Alvin Kumechia.
For me, we were talking on the phone one day, and I was telling you know my my um, from here. My dad does this, you know. I I my mom passed in '99, mm-hmm. and this and that and that. She was like, oh, I, you know, I would really want to love to meet her. I was yeah. like, so we kept talking, talking, and talking. I was like. Oh, yeah, I think you may have missed it. You know, I, my mom passed. She's, mm-hmm. she's on the, yeah. the like. No, I'd 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 love to to meet her. if you ever go to San Francisco. I'd love to go to the you know the Burnside. cemetery with you and it, you introduced me to your mom. You said that. Yeah. And I was like, wow. and I called Cynthia wow. that night. She was like, that's the girl for you. Wow. That's the girl. So body understands the layers of who you are, right. not just here, but who of all who have made you who you are. Yeah, that's right. And I was like, wow. That's yeah. It was yeah. it was a huge. It didn't Absolutely. take long at all. No, right. it didn't. The little tongue. In fact, uh, I was on, we met in Dallas. Yes. And then I had to immediately, like the next day, go to on tour. You went to Japan. We were, yeah, somewhere. Japan or Europe. And I was trying to figure out where I'm going. And and I said, well, God, give me a sign. Yeah. Give me a sign, give me a sign, give me a sign. I'm walking through Paris, Charles de Gaulle Airport. And I look up and there's a sign, Adria. Yes. Big as the um, side of this wall. What? Adria, yeah. In fact, I just took a picture. I was there again. Yes. And it was like, um, not Adria Airlines, Adria exactly Airways. like my name. A D R I A. I'm like, that's a sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many months did you guys date or court before you knew it was? Uh, when we became well, okay, we were still long distance, and yes. I went from Europe to Japan, we so I didn't in June see her again. 2016. Um, but we talked every day on the phone for like three three hours every day, every day, every day on day. the phone while you were on tour. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and for us, it was an advantage because we didn't have the physical stuff to get in the way. Right. No, all That's we could right. do was it's emotional. Yeah, all it's we could do. Bit. Yeah, and to the point where I knew her voice and the expressions way more than I knew her face. I had to learn that. Right. You know, but I knew from her voice if she was so inside guys, something said some crazy. Last question. Based on your schedules and based on the time that you have to put into everything that you have to do, how do you make this marriage work? Good question. How do you make mm. it work? You have to you have to determine yeah. in your mind that your marriage and your relationship is a priority. Because uh, there's a whole bunch of things and people that will stack onto your life. And uh, especially when you're a performer and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff, they're all kind of people and things that feel that they should be your priority. But you have to make sure that you uh, are, are, are business partners, yes. lovers, prayer partners, mm-hmm. friends, mm-hmm. Uh, boyfriend and girlfriend, mm-hmm. uh, husband and wife, date mm-hmm. night, all of that take stuff. Take trips. We take trips without yeah. Kaden now that we have him. I mean, yeah. he was like, how, I was like, I have to leave him. Yeah. Right. It's okay. I leave yeah. him with my mom. Yeah. Yeah. But we have to have our one on one time and our trips together. Absolutely. Yeah. I can't just wrap my whole yeah. life around. You have, you have to continue to connect on every single layer that God has allowed you to connect on. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you'll stumble into it. Like we'll, we'll you know, have an uh, experience that we'll talk about something that we've never talked about before. Right. You know, and I was like, I didn't, I didn't realize that. You know, and then, mm-hmm. and then other times you're dealing with the, the, the kind of the routine of life. Right. Uh, but it's only through quantity of time yeah. that you get there. There's no such thing as quality time. Right. That's bogus. And, We've been sold the And also on for me, because what he does is an entertainer, what he has to do even harder is to make me feel comfortable and make sure. Sh- sure he's doing what he's supposed to do when he's on the road that's right so there's no question or any doubt in my mind our insecurities are put because he's not doing what he's supposed to do right. i'm not worried if he's not going back to the hotel room and he's sneaking in and something or whatever right. he makes me comfortable i know their schedule he sends it to me we share the same bank accounts there's no secrets we don't have i don't have a bank account he doesn't have a different bank account we have the exact same bank accounts yes. um, we have the same cell phone accounts yes. um, i know his email password he knows my email password not because i'm insecure not because he's insecure because that's what marriage is about so we have established that from the beginning that we are partners we get into it have our disagreements but our core is we're going to make sure we got to make sure this is right nothing else get in the way i'm so glad you said that because we say and they think it's because we're the marriage vendors we have other people saying it no. and it just supports that point that's no. one flesh on every level right on every Absolute level, level. Right. it takes the question out there's that's no right. reason to have separate anything that's right accounts right. that's how right. things happen yeah. now that's in right. in marriage i have to i had to learn that in though where our flesh is 
bonded on every level. I am not her all end all to be all. Right. She still needs her girlfriend. I she do. needs her personal time. Her Gia knows all of that stuff I out. Do. And that's fine. And I had to get there. <laughs> he had to get there. But because he thought it was something so important. And I realized this with Adria that your spouses have praying people that yes. they're around. Yeah. Right. You have to it's, have it's it. It's because there are a thousand little intersections in life where you're going to need counseling from your yes. boys yeah. or from your girls. Yeah. You can't get and if that from person everybody. is not coming from a godly place, mm. they will destroy your stuff. Keep, yes. They'll still mar stay yes. married yes. and have your stuff destroyed <laughs> so they can be the first to tell everybody <laughs> how, how messed up you are. Yep. But if their person is coming from godly counsel, then I I trust, yeah. you know, even yeah. if something's, something's going on and she's needing to talk to her girls, that does uh, they will at least counsel from that right. perspective. Yes. Right. Very that's right, that's important. Good point. Thank you. All right, guys. You're Absolutely. Welcome. Thank you for sharing your we love can keep story going. for our vlog. <laughs> You're welcome. It's, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's so good to see you guys. And, you and, and everything that you all shared for real, for real, is what we teach. Yeah. But you are living it. Right. So we know it's real. Yeah. We it's can the see real it. deal. Holy you guys have given us and everyone that knows you an opportunity to see mm, marriage you. even under unusual circumstances. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That it can still work. It can still Absolutely. work. Absolutely. Yeah. Got to put Absolutely. the work in. Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're so proud of y'all. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. That's thank my you. baby. Yeah. Give a kiss. Give a kiss. Mm. Oh. <laughs> sure. You share. So you got a chance to look at three couples. One, they're dating. Yes. Jordan and Sian, and Theo and Melissa, and Vinny and Adrian. Hopefully you got a, a glimpse of your own uh, past in regards to how you guys met. And maybe you could relate to one of the three. Yeah, you can in relate some to way. Them, Yeah, and they all had different ways of how they met. Mm -hmm. um, the things that stuck out for me in regards to Sian and Jordan was that Sian said that we were friends. Mm -hmm. We were friends, mm -hmm. and and we really, you know, our our. Passion is for couples to just be friends. There's no, there's no motivation in regards to let's just get married quickly mm -hmm. because we have to get you into the states or you have gotten mm. in a situation or <clears throat> it's, it's, we're getting short on time so let's get married. We want to encourage people from Sian and Jordan's um, you know, talk is that they were friends first. Yeah. And the thing that Jordan said was he wanted to be around her friends. Her friends. Yeah. My people are yeah. your people. Yeah. He, said, that was, he said, I just want to be around her friends. Right. That you know? was big Cause I wanted Because I knew that I would be around her. Right. If I was around her friends. Right. And that was deep because <laughs> I, I wanted to be around your friends. I want to know who your friends are. Yeah. Married to her yet and they embraced him like a son-in-law. Right. And, um, you know, Vinny was able to see the heart of Adria by her wanting to visit his mother's grave. Right, that was deep. Um, you know, just because she, never heard she that. recognized that that was a big part of his heart. That was deep. And, you know, he, he shared how that made him feel. And that that was a family connection. That was this mm -hmm. woman wants to right. go to the grave where right. my mother is because she can't meet my mom in person, yeah. but I still need to be where she is. Yeah. And um, those two. Um, family related significant mm -hmm. uh, recalls I think played a really big part in teaching how we may have our extended family but it's still so very much a part of who we are mm -hmm. so that the person that we love or the person that loves us wants to be a part of that and that was really significant to me yeah. the family connection the, the connection <clears throat> or the point that Theo made was that he wasn't, he wasn't ready at that time because he was still trying to find himself. Yeah, he didn't think he had much to offer he her, so right. he just became a friend. Right. Until he could. And he really, said that, I didn't think I had much to offer. And I appreciated that honesty. Yeah. That was honest. That was yeah. really honest. Like how good. many men actually say, well, I don't have much to offer her, but I'm still going to be her friend so that when I mm -hmm. do get it together, it's on. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I also heard, um, was it Melissa? <coughs> no, it wasn't Melissa. It was um, uh, Adria. Mm -hmm. She said, I saw a man after God's own heart. Yes. That's what she said yes. she saw. She saw a man yes. after God's own heart. And, and 
she saw humility. Yes. And and so it's like, you know, that relationship that you're building, and, and I guess I'm more talking to those who are, are in relationships and you're looking to get married, that those are some of the qualities and criteria that you should be looking for is in regards to a man, is a man after God's own heart. Mm -hmm. And he's humble. Mm -hmm. And he's striving to find himself. Now, of course, you know, for those of you who are married, it's, <clears throat> it's not too late to rewrite the story. And we said that before mm -hmm. in, our, in our previous vlogs. Uh, so it's not too late to go back and to find out who who, who that person is, their core. So mm. so there was a lot of nuggets from mm -hmm. what they said. And, and the core part, we can't really emphasize that enough. Um, if you're dating someone, you need to know their core. Some people are rotten to their core. That phrase right there is really significant. And then some people are sensitive to their core. And then some people are prideful in their core. And you gotta understand the core of a person because that's gonna dictate the rhythm of the relationship. Um, if you're dating, um, you know, you have to be able to see what makes that person tick. That goes with what they're talking about, who they're talking about, where they're going, how they're spending their time. That's gonna show you who their core is. I knew that Derek's core was family um, because the first thing he told me was that his sister had had a baby. And that was uh, 25 years ago and she turned 25 in September. Right. And I remember that. Um, she was like six days old. Right. And I knew that his core was family because you talked about that. Like that was the first thing you yeah. talked about. The first thing I talked about was my sister. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I can't wait for my sister to meet you. And we talked about family. Right, that and we was, talked that about was, that family. That was our conversation. So yeah. let's talk about how we met. Okay. Um, interesting enough, uh, when Derek and I met, I was engaged to be married to my college boyfriend. And we really had to become friends because Everybody knew that I was engaged that summer and we were working at a school and a residential facility for at-risk youth and Derek worked in the residential facility and I was a therapist in the school and we had to go on a team building retreat for employees for five days out of the environment where we worked so we slept overnight for five nights at a retreat. And I didn't want to be there. I actually wished I had taken another job, <clears throat> but I had failed my licensure by one point and had to return because the job that I wanted required me to be licensed. And so I went back with an attitude, a chip on my shoulder, just really, really upset, disgruntled. The only good thing was that I was planning a wedding. And even, that, even now as I think about it, that was a delu delusionment. <laughs> time, okay, so yeah. Derek, uh, apparently got the job, but came to the retreat late because he started the job and they told him where we were and it was like a two hour ride. So he had to get there. We were already in session. So by the time he got there, we were around after lunchtime and I was running out of the cabin because I was late because I didn't really want to go to the next session. And I ran through the curb of the hill and tripped and tripped right in front of him and he looked down like this giant and he said, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm okay. Are you okay? You know, trying to be smart because I bumped into him, you know. And he picked me up and I remember seeing your eyes. Your eyes were the deepest emotional part of your face that I'd ever seen in a man. Like your eyes had a story. Um, mm -hmm. And I wanted to know the story. Like I kept looking in his eyes and I just wanted to know what was his story. I mean, and he had, you know, it was summer, it was the end of the summer, so it was September, it was right after Labor Day, so it was warm. And you had on this jersey and your arms were buffed and glistening. Glistening? <laughs> glistening. And, you, and, and you just looked, you looked like a gentle giant. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and I wanted to kind of be in your presence. But of course, you know, I was engaged, so I honored my engagement and I definitely didn't cross any boundaries. But <clears throat> because of that, we became really good friends because we cared for the same students. And we started to work together to create plans for them and, you know, activities for them. And it turned into a really, you know, uh, strong friendship. 
Okay, so you're not going to share anything else? You're looking at me. You got I've say. never heard you say this story in such detail. I, I know. Just, you know. You went glistening and yeah. bulging. And, well, you know, I thought, I thought know, I'd share the things that I remembered. You know, it's, it's so... Um, <clears throat> share your story with each other. Because when Sonia was sharing the story, I know the story because I lived the story. But to hear it, it just brought back a lot of good memories. Uh, it reminded me of how we met and the significance of it. And it doesn't change the circumstances now, but it does give some self-reflection on why you met, mm. how you met, why you met, and if you're married, what led you to getting married. Um, and if you don't have all those qualities that were shared in the video from all three couples, and if you don't have all those things, then you got to figure out why you got married. You know? Yeah. And, and we can help <clears throat> go back and help you process those things so you can have to breathe breath back into your marriage. Mm -hmm. so. And you know what I loved about all three, including our story? Here's the thing that I loved about all three. Jordan, Sian had a boyfriend at the time, so they really were friends. But Jordan injected himself in her life so that he could just be around her. And he didn't cross any boundaries either. Um, uh, Theo didn't think he had anything to offer Melissa at the time because he was unemployed and yet he still injected himself in her life because he wanted to be around her. Right. <laughs> Vinny saw Adria in his, in his experience, he saw her and asked a friend to introduce him to her. He, th he, he was struck by her inner and outer beauty and he injected himself around her um, even while he was out of the country for months and months and months at a time. He pursued her as a friend. And then I was engaged and Derek would inject himself in my life. He would come through the office, through the school and stop by the office and bring me a snack, you know, and just say, hey, you want a snack? You've been in here all day, you look hungry. And I was engaged still. He injected himself into my life. Let me say this to you ladies, the reason I'm bringing that out because I thought that that was an interesting common denominator for all four. The young dating, the married, every, everybody. <clears throat> you can't go back and do it over, but I, what I will say, if you are dating, you need to know that that dude is into you. You don't need to be chasing him down. The Bible tells us he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor from the Lord. That's Proverbs 18. That means that he has to do the pursuing. He has to come for you. He has to look for you. He has to inject himself right. in your world. He has to be okay with just being your friend because there, were, there wasn't any sexual activity going on with any of those four scenarios. Right. That was confirmed, right? right? So it was strictly friendship. If you're dating someone and he's not trying to be your friend, that's a red flag. That's a red flag. I'm gonna add real quick. This is a long one here. Mm -hmm. Y'all get comfortable. Long, long, long. <laughs> about 40 minutes. This one here. Y'all be. Out. And we said it was gonna be short, but I don't know. That but just. No, no, no. But, I but just felt like forget, I had to I'm say that. I'm gonna forget. Okay, we'll get it out. Get it out. Who are you talking about? Like that? Stop it. Okay. <laughs> look, look, look. The other thing that was that was consistent with the females, when they stepped out the door, they were laid. <laughs> Okay, I know my daughter Sian, she brings the, the eyebrows on bleak. A fleek, <laughs> fleek. Bleak, you fleek. said bleak. <laughs> the, the hair. But I was we, in the woods. But, I had a bandana on. But well, let me start with my daughter first. Okay. Huh? So she had it all laid out, and, and that's what caught Jordan's attention. Like Theo said, yes. oh, her hair was just. Uh, he described boom. it in he, detail. He described yeah. the hair, and Melissa came out looking just blam. <laughs> and. Vinny saw Adria. Vinny saw Adria. He said twice like, in the said, same said, whoa, church setting. <laughs> whoa, whoa, what's happening? And then I saw. He said he was. She, he said she was the most beautiful. Yes. Uh, African American so, woman. He'd so, ever seen. so, if you're going to be found, and what'd you say when you saw me? I had a bandana on my head though. I wasn't. You, you I wasn't. looked. You looked good. I had to see you that way. You had the bandana. You had your jeans on. You know, you you fit the 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 woodsy kind of look. Mm -hmm but you were still glowing mm. and you caught my attention. Mm -mm. You know, so, so it's, 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 
presenting yourself so you can be found. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I had to say that. Okay, that was, that's, that was that's one good. Thing was in you have to be findable, ladies. That's what Derek is yeah, saying. To on, be found, get your hair done. You gotta be findable. Fix the wig. Get the, up. So, <laughs> get the eyebrows clipped. Yeah, yeah. It, it's true, though, because you just never really know where you're going to meet. Now, remember, we're talking anywhere. We're talking about Eros love. We're talking about the romantic love. We're yeah. talking about the passionate love. Right. We're not talking about infatuation either. Yes. Because you can have all those um, attributes and still attract someone that's infatuated by you. You know, is that person going to still be attracted to you when your hair is not slamming? you know, and your nails aren't done, but you know, is there an inner beauty that, that exudes, right. you know, because you know, that's not real reality. We're not going to always be glammed up, but at the end of the day, we, he, men want to know that the woman takes care of herself. That's it. That's yeah. My point. She takes care of herself. So yeah. please, you know, take note of that point. Um, that was the one thing I had in, I wanted to say. So that was it for us. That was it. Okay. Okay, so we're 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 hoping that you enjoyed <laughs> this. We're hoping that you enjoyed this e this episode on the glory of your love story. Like it it comes with friendship. <laughs> it comes with romance. It comes with being deliberate and intentional. Right. Uh, and so if you're if you didn't have that love story experience and you're married and you're like, man, I was robbed of it. Create it, like Derek Create. said. Rewrite it. Rewrite it. Do something to commemorate. We're going to do this new story, love story. There's glory in the love story. And we're going to start over and do that. Okay? So you have an opportunity to do that. So now that you know <clears throat> what, what you're going to do, do with it, it. we want to say watching. a special thank you to Jordan and Sion, to Theo and Melissa, and to Vinny and, and Adria for participating in this week's vlog. Thank you guys so much. We love all of you dearly. And we're so glad we had some time to have quality conversations and just fellowship with each other. Make time for the people in your life that you love. We definitely yeah. did this week. And we're so thankful for the holiday season that afforded us to do that. Yeah. And this is the last law for 2018. Yes. So happy new year to you. We'll yeah. see you next, next year. year. Until then, take good care of yourselves. Bye.